Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Zane. Showing off some of the gameplay in the background, I got to play him for about an hour and a half. We'll look at his abilities, a little bit of his skill tree, an example of augments in case you don't know what they are. How good is he? How much fun he is to play? Just general impressions there. And then just talking a little bit about the gameplay event as a whole. If you are interested in playing Amara, we were given the choice to play Amara and Zane. I got the chance to play both, but if you want to check out the other Vault Hunter, you can check the description below. Both of these videos should should go out at the same time with any luck. Before we talk about Zane's abilities, we do have a giveaway going on at the moment. I won't hop on for it too long. Giving away Borderlands 3 ends at the end of this month. Um, it's in the comments, so do check that out if you're interested. But the big question is, what is Zane's ability and skill tree? And this is a big difference for Borderlands 3, in case you didn't know. There's still the three talent trees that you can run, much like other Borderlands 3 games, but in this case, each of the talent trees has an ability, and, and sort of the talent tree focuses on that ability a little bit, but you get a general sense of uh, what it does and what it means. For example, we have the undercover talent tree, uh, which has the ability barrier, which is you can throw down a deployable barrier, the block damage but also when you fire through it it increases gun damage too really cool ability actually i did use this quite a lot but i'm generally going to talk about what abilities you should be using because the cool thing about zane is that you can use two the second ability i wanted to highlight is sentinel which is the little drone that follows you around um, each of the abilities for zane 2 when you hold down the button uh, the action button so you press the button it does something if you hold it down it tends to uh, do something else so like you have another way to interact with that ability uh, for the shield as i just mentioned you can pick it up instead of it being deployable on the ground you can pick it up and run with it but essentially you can hold down the button which gets the drone to focus on the target that you have in your crosshair as you're seeing on screen again you have the little icon and a little sort of hand movement that suggests that zane wants the sentinel to shoot that character which is really cool and really fun to use and finally, the last ability under the doubled agent tree is Digiclone, where you put down a clone, it does damage, it sort of distracts the enemy, takes a bit of the threat away from you. But also if you hold down the button, you will swap places with where the clone actually is, if that makes sense. If you throw him down on one side of the map, you run to the other, hold down the button, you'll both swap places, which is good at getting out of tight scrapes. But to be honest with this ability, I didn't feel like I got much use out of it when I was using it. No doubt you could do some really cool stuff in here. I'm definitely not saying that this ability is bad in any way, but with the choice of two abilities out of three, I was definitely happier to run with a barrier and a sentinel. Both of these abilities were cool. The barrier was fun to use when it came to sort of keeping myself alive in sort of co-op play with three or four people. I think this is gonna be like a must pick to sort of mitigate some of the damage coming in. But Sentinel was just a fun thing to do. One other thing that's really cool about these abilities is that you have talents that you can pick which are called augments, which adjust the ability to an extent they change how it works to give it some unique traits that might increase the damage uh, the one i ran in particular was for the sentinel and it was called winter's drone which converts the sentinel's primary weapon damage to cryo damage which basically meant that i was freezing targets with my drone i could have done it with some of the other abilities but to be honest i was quite happy to run with this and i think that it was the right choice i don't believe there was any way for us to respec our traits anyway so it was kind of what i picked and wanted to keep to if that makes sense uh, but that's just an example on using the ability augmenting it and adding some other traits in there that you can use but as you sort of seen on screen the loadout screen you can see how that all works when it comes to a loadout but that's what i was running at the time what's saying like is he any good should i be playing him i was deeply impressed more so i was really sort of shocked on how fun he actually was he was a hero that no doubt a lot of people may be overlooking. He's very much the assassin class, but like I mentioned in the Amara video, the sort of affinity in RPG roles, I don't necessarily feel uh, as established as Borderlands 1 or 2. If you wanted to run the assassin, you would run Zero or Mordecai. You couldn't really do that with Brick, whereas I feel that stuff like weapon affinity and styles aren't really as big of an issue in Borderlands 3 at least, unless you're really deeply uh, interacting with the skill tree at end game and at higher levels which of course makes sense but at the point that we were playing it didn't feel like you were having as much of an impact uh, from what i could tell there was no level of oh if you want to play zane he's really good and has like weapon affinity uh, with sniper rifles or handguns or any form of like assassin -y kind of weapons it felt that you could basically run with anything if you wanted to and it would work so whilst there is a big focus on the assassin sneaking around and talents that may do that you can also so acts as a bit of a tank with a shield as an example so it doesn't necessarily feel that if you just want to play the assassin you can play zane i don't really have an interest in playing a kind of roguey class but i still had a lot of fun playing zane even not playing in that style 
you know, just running in with a shield or just running at people with a shotgun, you can very much do that with Zane, which was a pleasant surprise to be honest. But the fact that you can use two abilities at once means that you can string together kind of combos, and because of that, it's a lot of fun to use it. You know, being able to throw out your Digiclone and your Sentinel at the same time to fight a boss. The only downside, and I don't know whether this is like an actual thing or not, but you can't use grenades when you have these two abilities used in gear slots. So this was on controller at least. What I mean is like on keyboard, you might be able to use your grenade and two abilities, but from my experience of playing, that wasn't possible. But that's likely to maybe change in the future. Um, but to be honest, I'm quite happy to have two abilities over using a grenade, but depends on the grenade mostly. Um, but yeah, I really had a lot of fun playing Zane. I was honestly worried that playing Zane would ruin Amara for me, but both of these were quite fun. I am gonna talk about the skill tree for Zane a little bit more detail when I'm less tired, to be honest. Uh, but I did want to give my first impressions, get that gameplay out to you guys if you wanted to see it. Um, we got to play a lot of Promethea, which is the second hub world, as Randy Pitchford talks about, uh, in the initial gameplay event, which is, you know, was really cool to see. Sanctuary 3 looks amazing. Uh, but we got to run around Promethea. There was like a main sort of mission that we could do, which required us to kill Giga Brain, which you might be seeing a bit of gameplay of that boss fight in the background. But there was also some really good side missions that were actually a lot of fun to do. Um, I predominantly did this on Zane, the side missions to be fair, and I had a lot of fun doing so. It very much feels like a hub world, kind of like Destiny hub worlds and how that works. Less of a run from A to B kind of thing that I think certainly Borderlands 1 suffered from quite a lot. Borderlands 2, not as much, but it definitely feels like an open world kind of game. Not in the sense of it's, you know, like the always online kind of game, uh, but I feel that, but I do feel that Gearbox have put a lot of stock into trying to make the world feel as alive as possible. Uh, the bosses felt really cool, the level design was awesome, and even the fact of having NPCs fight alongside you with Lorelei, who's a new character, or Zero, uh, playing on your own, I think that made a big difference. And again, very much a thing that Gearbox doubled down on, and you could see that they were doing that almost intentionally. Um, spoke to the developers a little bit about this too and you know Borderlands 1 when you play it on your own it's fine but it can be a very uh, isolating sort of game it's very much you definitely feel like you're on your own in the world which does add to the atmosphere a little bit but I guess to an extent they wanted to remove that from Borderlands 3 and make sure that you felt like you were fighting alongside NPCs and teammates that really made that really made that experience a bit more alive and I think that made a really big difference too. This game was a lot more different than I expected it to be. I don't know how I was expecting it to play but it looks gorgeous, it runs really well. There were a couple of bugs that I ran into such as trying to get into a like a car. Uh, it would kill me instantly and then my person wouldn't show up so we had to restart the game like but you know this game is still in development. Uh, it wasn't the final build of the game but there was a video that I wanted to do answering a lot of questions from Reddit, looking at some of the stuff like uh, max level and that. I tried to find out as much information as possible, so do look out for that video going out in a couple of days time. But Zane, honestly a lot of fun. I don't want to just sit here and say that both the characters that I played were great, but they were. Like I think Zane is somebody that I wasn't necessarily looking to main and I'm still not really looking too much, but it really does depend on how good Moe's and Flack are to be fair. But Zane honestly was a lot of fun being able to use two abilities um, and equip two abilities, just made it string together, combo really well. And it honestly felt like I wasn't playing a Borderlands character. It was more similar to like other looter shooter games like Destiny using the abilities there, but just obviously a lot better. Weapons, as I mentioned in the Amara video, really good honestly like they've they really doubled down on what makes these weapons special their specific traits and stuff i didn't think it would be this uh cut and dry i guess i'd call it uh where you definitely know that you're using a maliwan weapon or a td or or whatever uh, but because of that, the weapons just feel so good. And speaking to the developers, that is one element that they are incredibly happy on and think that people are really going to enjoy. And I agree, because the weapons are ridiculous. Really excited to see more about this game. Um, hopefully we'll have the chance to play it in the future, but Zayn especially, I think he is going to be a Vault Hunter that will take your interest. I think, personally, you may enjoy him more than you may think. So I would definitely say give him a chance. Uh, we're going to look at the skill tree a bit more in more detail. It's more of a speculation video, but this is more of a, this is the information. This is how he plays, this is how funny he is. Uh, and I'm really excited to get more hands on him, especially at higher tier levels uh, where you can, you know, play with the talents a little bit more, really customize it. Level 10, of course, you aren't really going to get that, but you can sort of see how deep that rabbit hole can go to an extent. 
Um, but that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay in the background. It's mostly just me being rambling <laughs> about the hero and the game, but um, I just wanted to get this stuff out there. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, if you are interested in the giveaway, do enter it. It's in the description and the comments below if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your guys' support, so thank you very much. Take care, and I'll see you soon.